Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I can start now. Uh, so a uh, very pleasant morning to everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, today, I Vikas, GDSC NIT's second year member, would like to would like to express my heartiest welcome and warm regards to all my seniors, juniors, and my batchmates. Uh, GDSC Flutter Festival is coming up, having lots of exciting workshops for Flutter, where you can learn more about Flutter and deep dive into its magical world. So stay tuned. Before we dive into today's workshop, I request all of you to join from your laptop or desktop, if possible. So today, uh, as you guys all know, we are having Flutter workshop and we will learn about uh, what Flutter is, why to choose Flutter, its importance, high demand and how to start with Flutter and many more. So our Flutter wing welcomes you all and I hope you all are excited as I am. So starting with why to choose Flutter, I would like to say this is a really important question before starting any work, not just Flutter. Uh, we should know why we are choosing this and what benefits it will provide to us. The most loving feature of Flutter is that it allows us to build Android and iOS app at the same time and the same code with just little modification. Another thing is that it uses only one language for whole app which increases ease of work. As we all know that Flutter is a package built in Dart language which removes all the mess created by multiple languages. Due to its great performance, uh, since Flutter is not using any OEM widgets and there is no JavaScript br bridge for reactive views. So last but not least is that Flutter is an open source tool, which means it has countless possibilities of customizing almost everything in the framework. So in the next slide, as you all can see, these are the companies which are currently using Flutter SDK, uh, like Google Pay, Cluster Me, uh, Pairing, and many more apps are built using Flutter. So let's <coughs> talk more about Flutter. Everything inside a Flutter is a widget and you build widgets upon widgets just like Lego blocks on Lego blocks in order to create your own app. It comes with a whole bunch of pre-built widgets that make it easy to lay out your app. So straightforward things are laying out your apps with rows or with columns or with stacks. Uh, when we are developing apps, uh, one of the biggest pain is that when you have to run the app, because often on iOS and Android, it can take anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds between saving your code, running your app, compiling it, and finally seeing it on screen. But when you are working in Flutter, as soon as you update your code and you hit save, your user interface will change in front of eyes in just a fraction of a second. As, as soon as you change something, you hit restart, you see the changes in your app. And then you iterate and then you end up narrowing down on the final design that you want because you have to access to the super fast reload feature. Talking about its documentation that makes Flutter unique as compared to other cross-platform SDKs, documentation is our friend. And as developers, we might not having a lot of friends, but the documentation is definitely one of them. From basic to advanced, all the things have been written in detailed manner. So now I would like to invite Apu Bhaiya to take over the session. He is the third year Flutter moderator and will guide you what we are going to make in this workshop. So over to you, Bhaiya. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope I am audible and clear. Yes, you are. Uh, Bhaiya, you are audible but uh, not visible. Uh, okay, just a minute. Yes, Bhaiya, now you are. Am I visible now? Yes, Bhaiya. Okay, uh, so like, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, a very good morning. Uh, as you all know that Flutter is really magical, right? Uh, uh, so we have actually thought uh, of a basic app uh, which uh, will be good for you for learning purposes. So. 
it will be a to-do app. Uh, the screenshots are in front of you. We will be making this app. Uh, as you can see that uh, there will be a text box where you can just write a new task, save it, and uh, then the tasks will appear on uh, uh, on here, uh, where you can see all your tasks. The checkbox will uh, signify that the task has been completed, and uh, it will be strike. It, it will be like a strike through, and uh, the add button is simply for uh, adding a new task. So. Uh, before we begin, uh, let me just tell you about the naming conventions of uh, of Flutter. So, uh, whenever we declare a class in Flutter, uh, the the like classes, enums, or any type of extension should be in upper upper camel case. So the and uh, if uh, if like uh, if we want to make uh, if we want to name our app like Flutter create when whenever we Flutter create and name our app or any directories or any source files everything should be in camel case uh, sorry snake case okay and uh, the last but not least the variable constant parameters all should be in lower camel cases so let me uh, enough with the like theory part uh, let me just share my screen and show you Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, my yeah, is it? It is. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just actually just show you how to do a Flutter create. Then we will just uh, move on to this project. Okay. So. Okay, so what we do uh, whenever we want to create a Flutter app, we just simply write uh, Flutter create and uh, simply just uh, name the package name. Like uh, let's suppose my app should uh, should uh, should have named like uh, my first app. Okay, so my first app should be written like this. My first. Yeah, uh, the the syllables can be separated by underscore, but everything should be in lower uh, lower case. Okay. So, if I press enter, it takes just a bit of time and then uh, a new app will be created for you. Flutter manages everything. Uh, it creates a basic app for you, uh, which is something like this. Uh, when you create, a, then uh, you can go to your respective folder, like uh, my folder name should be my first app, right? Uh, my first app. So you see, uh, I am in my first app, and then I can start coding. But before that, uh, I have already prepared, and and actually, then you can uh, just simply type Flutter run, and when you press enter, uh, you will see a screen similar to this. This is the basic app that Flutter has already created for you all. You don't need to like uh, write any code before. This. Okay. So let me just shift back to that app and. Uh, then we So my app name was uh, my to do. Okay, so this is the app, uh, the to do app, which we are talking about. Uh, let's not go into the tech jargon for right now. Uh, for now, uh, let's just stand from uh, like basic. Okay. Uh, you can see the this increment counter, right? The where it is written counter plus plus, and. Uh, and here you can see uh, 
there's a button la yeah, the floating action button okay the fab button so what happens whenever i click this add button see the counter goes on okay so this is like the basic app uh, which has been given to you uh, i will just clear everything and uh, we will start from uh, the uh, very beginning okay so first let me just clear everything uh, So I removed everything from me. Okay. So uh, before we begin, I will just make a new file. Uh, you can say uh, my screens. Okay. Uh, where I will create keep every, uh, all of my screens here. So like, this is my screens folder, where I will uh, keep all the file related to my screens. So my first screen should be. Uh, task the screen right uh, or you can say the home screen so i will just create a home screen dot task and uh, uh, there is a certain package uh, that you need to import before starting anything that is a uh, material dot task okay so it's the basic uh, package that needs to be imported for all the widgets and everything that uh, you are going to write Okay. Uh, so, uh, before we begin, uh, there are two types of basic widgets. Uh, you might have already seen in main dot dart. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's see, there is a stateless widget, right? And uh, there is another thing called stateful widget. So basically, what happens? Uh, stateless widget is a uh, is something like whenever uh, on your screen something does not change. There is no user input uh, and uh, you don't need to refresh anything. Then you use stateless widget, and whenever you want to uh, like refresh the state, change the state of the app, refresh the screen, there is user input and uh, things will change on the screen. Then it's called a stateful widget. Uh, for now, uh, we will go with stateless widget. Uh, then we will see later on. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, my app name should be Home Screen. Right? Uh, now uh, let me just. Uh, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, there's something called a scaffold. Scaffold uh, nothing uh, provides nothing but this white page. You can see this white page. Uh, this is what scaffold does. Okay, so for now, uh, let me just uh, uh, let me just write a uh, define a body here and so copilot is acting very smart here. So, okay. So let me just write uh, uh, whatever I have defined. I will just show it. Uh, it hasn't been reflected in my app yet. So let me just fix that. Uh, here you can see this. So here you can see this my home. Right. All you need to do is uh, call your home screen uh, here. Okay. Uh, once your home screen has been called, uh, it uh, you just need to hot reload your app and it will start affecting it. See, so this is uh, what we have done so far. Okay. So uh, if you remember, there uh, there should have been a app bar, right? So let me just define an app bar. Okay. Uh, so uh, app bar. Um, 
Okay, so the title should uh, of the app bar should be uh, Flutter To Do, right? Uh, or I can say like To Do app. Okay. Uh, uh, now uh, there should be a floating action button uh, at the bottom, uh, signifying uh, our uh, like the add button, right? So let me just get it done. Floating action button. So the on pressed is something uh, this it calls uh, whenever the button is pressed, and the icon is something uh, which will be displayed. Here. So uh, let me just reload it and show. You. Okay, so it's saying that on pressed can't be empty. So for now, uh, let's just keep it like. See, so uh, our app is like uh, taking its shape. So uh, let uh, what the next thing is required is like uh, there should be lists of the tasks, right? Uh, the lists of the tasks that have whatever we have like made. Uh, whatever we have added, it should appear here. So uh, let me just uh, make uh, another, you can say, folder. Uh, it's better to define each widget in separate files because that makes your code pretty clean. So uh, let me just say, okay, so let me just name this as widgets. It will be like uh, task widget. Uh, you can say like task dot task. Uh, uh, it's better to name it like tasks. Uh, this dot dot dot. It sounds more. Uh, one more thing which is required here is that there uh, you we don't know. Uh, we should uh, like make a blueprint of what a task contains, right? So uh, where there there will be a fold, folder named as models. The naming is up to you but these are these folders names are something which is used in industry so it's like a standard so there should be uh, like task dot that okay tasks dot that uh, this will nothing this will be nothing but like a basic model for my task screen okay so it will be like class tasks so uh, what our task should contain? Our task should contain something like, uh, uh, we can say that name, there should be a title for the task. So there should be a title. Uh, there should be a description about the task. Uh, sorry, not description, but uh, uh, the title is itself a description and uh, there should be a uh, whether it has been completed or not so for now let's it's complete okay uh, just ignore that okay so of course since it's a 
star is a, it's a class, so we need to define the constructor. Now, since the constructor has been defined here, uh, now we know uh, how our class should look like, right? Uh, one moment. Okay, so uh, we know how a task should look like. Now let's create our task list. So how our list should look like. So as always, uh, before starting, before defining any widget here, uh, we must uh, include the flutter material data. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, make it a stateless widget again, and its name will be uh, task list. So what a task list should look like? Uh, it should be a list type. Uh, thankfully, there is an there is a widget for that. Uh, just the basic list type. Uh, there is a title. Title is uh, for now. Uh, let's not. Uh, let's just define something like this. Uh, title should be like this, and uh, I think we are done. Yeah. Uh, all we need is a title, and uh, there should be a trailing widget also. Uh, for now, the trailing widget. Uh, let's just uh, include a checkbox. Okay. So. So we have made our list tile and all we need to do is include it in our home screen. So uh, instead of uh, this home written here, we need our task, uh, task uh, that tile written here. So I am just going to replace the body now. first and the child should uh, the child should be the list view uh, list view builder is something uh, which uh, actually allows me to iterate uh, like uh, include any object multiple number of times okay so the item builder here is uh, uh, the uh, the function like it will call whenever some Okay, so as you can see, the item builder is something it will call uh, whenever uh, whenever it like goes through iteration, it will call this function. And how many number of times is defined by item count? Okay, so let me just define that also. Okay, so for now it's not that good. Uh, now let's uh, let's just uh, do a reload and see what uh, things we have done. Till now. Okay, so basically uh, this is what it looks like for now. So it's taking shape, but it's still not done. Okay, so let's just continue. So far, 
to the student. We need to call task list rather than list type. It's better to call since we have made a class. It's better to call it one only. Okay. The thing will be seen. There will be no difference. So uh, now you see it has taken more like a shape and the check boxes are already there and uh, the title, uh, it doesn't matter what the title is for now. So uh, these things are done. Okay. Uh, now what remains uh, for us is, uh, uh, let me just limit this first. Uh, in, uh, there is item builder here, uh, we, all, we can also define the item count. Which can be funny. Uh, just make the item count there. So the item count will be ten. Okay. Uh, so now we want our this uh, this add button to work so we will now uh, make a screen uh, to add our tasks okay so let's just make another screen name as add tasks So now here we will need a stateful visit. Add task screen and we, we should give it a route name. So this is my add task screen. Add task screen. Fine. Uh, now all we need is to all we need to do is push this screen uh, from our home screen. Right. From here we want to push it, but before that uh, we need to define some routes. We need to define the routes, and uh, as you can see, uh, so the route should be like uh, the route name. Uh, the route name should be here. So we already defined the route name, right? So all we need to do is add task screen dot route name. This will do it, and we need to call here is add task screen. Uh, this uh, actually tells Flutter that okay, a new screen has been added, which should be, which will be used later in the app. So now, mm, from the home screen, in case of this on pressed, we will call navigator that uh, dot push name things of context. There, uh, you need to give a context, you can say. Context actually defines the where this uh, widget is located in the app, app tree. Uh, so push, uh, push name. We will just push this uh, particular route name, which is our add task screen dot route name. Uh, 
The teal color is coming through here, uh, where we have defined our uh, theme data. And uh, let me end the title. Looks good. So all set, I guess, uh, this should work. Okay, see, uh, the add task screen is coming from. Since we haven't defined the scaffold there, so that's why uh, things are getting a bit ugly in that screen. So we will just wrap this with a uh, scaffold. Look good. Okay, uh, so you see that the add task screen is here, right? Uh, so it's written, uh, everything works good. Now we need to populate and make our add task screen, which, which should look uh, like there should be a you can say a text box uh, where you write the title of that task and a save button, a save button where on which you click and the task is saved. So let's just start. Okay, so in the container, um, we will just define a text form field, text field. Text field. Um, okay, see, what, uh, what we have to do, uh, whenever the user comes to this screen, we need to auto-focus it, like the cursor should already be there. And of course, uh, whenever the user adds something, it should be added, right? So let's just do it. Okay, let me just define it from the scratch. Only. So, auto focus should be true, and uh, the text field. Right? So, on change, on change is actually uh, let's just call on submitted rather than on change. 
you will know what happens on the uh, on submitted actually can actually uh, what you can say uh, needs an argument as you can see here so whatever the, the that is written in the text field okay that will appear here so let me just say value so it will contain whatever there is, is written in the text field and for now let's just print and see uh, like what happens Uh, but before that, uh, this should make a function for submitted because we don't know what happens when the field is submitted. So you can say on save, on save. On save and which work should be to like print save. Let's see what happens. Print value and then it's called. Let's see if it works. Okay, so you can see uh, there is, is a text widget, right? Whatever I write here. Okay, one more thing which is missing here. You can see uh, this DDDD whatever I had written has been printed, so it's working fine. Uh, let's just continue. So rather than print save, in the, I will just call val only. Okay, now the what we need is a button, a uh, submit button, which uh, the user should know that okay, this particular field has been submitted, and it should work. So let me just define submit button here. Uh, one more thing. Now, uh, as we know that the submit button should be below this text widget. Okay, so this is the work of a column. Uh, column uh, allows you to put a widget below another one. So let me just uh, like wrap this thing uh, with a column. So column take widgets takes widget. So okay, so Copilot is really actually really smart here. So uh, yes, this is what we needed to do. Uh, raise button. Uh, I think uh, the raise button is not applicated. Okay, let me see what's the new. Okay, it's elevated button. Okay. Elevated. So it takes a on press and a child which will be displayed on it. Okay, so on press uh, for now. Let's keep it null. Sign short now. And child will be nothing but a text widget. Save. The one. And we will just call. On the safe. Okay. okay fine. So on the safe should not do this. Okay, I should 
kehidupan. Let's just see. Uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, let's just do like some padding. Okay, I okay, so my right. uh, elevated button is not going to so We must wrap it in a container and just uh, give a bit of padding so that the button looks good. Okay, so on press is working. Okay, fine. One more thing uh, we need is whatever is written, like you can say it a tie task name. Okay, that's good. So a task name, a task name should be like always present, right? Uh, the task name should be there so that we can use it anytime. Uh, whenever the user like saves we need to call set state okay so here we need a set state set state what it does uh, actually flutter does not know when a user has inputted something and something is changed on the screen so set state will help uh, set state actually lets flutter know okay so something has uh, something new has entered just refresh the screen and put the task name as value and refresh the screen now okay so it will refresh the screen and everything will work fine as always okay so it will refresh the screen and now the task name will be nothing but uh, whatever you have written so let me just print it and see what happens Works right, fine. Okay, now we want uh, we want something like whenever I uh, like something is done, right? Uh, the thing is done. What it should do? It should pass the data to the previous screen, right? So uh, here the previous screen is this. It should pass the data here. And uh, a new task should be added. The task list should, list should contain a new task now. Okay. So let's ju just work on that thing now.
Okay, let's continue. Uh, now uh, there will be an option for open for us. Uh, what we can do is whenever the things are saved, so whenever this on save is called, uh, actually we there should be a check right that uh, if the task name is not empty, then only we will do it. So let's just not add that check for now. Find this tasks. We need to pass a context. Dot pop actually just pops the screen. Nothing else, just pops the screen and you are done. So now, whenever I will save, uh, something like this will happen. Just a minute. Now, like I am returning back to my screen, right? So things are working fine. Uh, now we will. Uh, now we, what we need to do is uh, what we need to do is now just uh, whatever we have written should be displayed here. That's all. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, by default, the boolean that uh, of a new task. Uh, new task which is in my tasks. Uh, by default, this is false. That means that uh, the thing is not completed yet. So we will fix that uh, later. Uh, okay. So so now once we uh, once we pop. Uh, we want uh, we want to pass uh, down this uh, what you can say whatever data is here to our uh, parent widget that is the home screen dot okay so just give me a moment I will show you.
I'm about to pee about that. Whenever we pop, I just want to pass uh, down. So yeah, we will we will just uh, uh, pass it down, uh, which is our task name. Right? Just one uh, piece. So we'll pass the tasks uh, to our previous screen. Okay. Now we need uh, what we need is uh, we want that uh, we should uh, we should like uh, accept this thing in our on our previous screen, right? So let me just uh, write a function for that and show. You. Let me just uh, like uh, uh, make a, you can say, uh, let me just make a function for that first. Okay. So, uh, since it's like a, uh, 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 we need to like uh, go to that uh, add, add task button screen. So let me just first make a function. required uh, is a list right so what we need uh, whenever something uh, like uh, we actually we need to like uh, we need to define a list of items which uh, will be like uh, displayed here right 
so let me just uh, make a list of tasks a list of tasks which will be we call it uh, task items task items and an empty list Value, so just uh, uh, let me just push everything on GitHub first. Repository, I have already uploaded it. So the link will be given in the chat. So in case you want to see, you can, you can track the pro progress stage. Thank <laughs> you. 
just a minute please Actually, my question is actually uh, Samya, would you like to take over for a while? Actually, my I need to restart my PC. Yeah, sure. No issues. It's no issues. Thank very much. I'll be uh, taking over from here. Uh, just a second. <laughs> 